Good afternoon all. Have I got a PCB for you today? This one's an absolute beauty because it's quite big and there's quite a lot of stuff on it. Um, I only had five of these made because, uh, well, it's a complex board. Can't see myself making more than five of these. Let's open it up and take a look. I think this one is over 100 millimeters in width, so I've broken out of the um, size needed for the minimum pricing. But uh, let's take a look at this ground plane. Let's make sure that that's all intact. And yeah, that looks really quite lovely. Let's take that rubber band off. Um, as I said, five of these. Let's just check that uh, ground plane. I think that's all intact. There's not an awful lot on there. It's mostly uh, plus and minus 12 volts. There are one or two signal tracks running on here simply because they had to hop across uh, signal tracks that are on this side. So it's mostly uh, op amps, resistors, capacitors. There's a few transistors. Uh, there's a couple of uh, CMOS chips here which make up the noise generator, which we've seen because I did the noise generator on its own board a while back. There's a couple of uh, eight pin dueling lines here for inputs. These are going to be RCA phonos. And look at this, there's a 16 pin ribbon cable connector. Ooh, uh. So what exactly is this board? Well, it's uh, one of my vocoder printed circuit boards, uh, four pots along here. This contains oscillators. There are two oscillators with frequency, shape and level pots. And there's another level pot for the digital noise. As I say, these are CMOS chips that so derives noise using a linear feedback shift register. Uh, there's up here, there's actually a, a quad CMOS analog switch because it switches between signal and noise under certain conditions. There's a transconductance op amp on here, which is used as a AGC, an automatic gain control to keep the noise level uh, constant. And the ribbon cable is what's going to take a set of signals uh, up to and from the filter boards. There are going to be seven filter boards, but that's the last board I'm going to do. So what, I, what can I do with this board? Well, I can put power to it. I can build um, the oscillators. Now, some of the oscillators have, or one of the oscillator has pots underside, and they're slightly shifted back from the pots on the top side. So there's going to have to be a daughter board uh, underneath in order to bring that pot back forward again so it all lines up on the front panel. And it's literally just an offsetting daughter board. There's really very little to it. So I think uh, the thing to do with this is just to get started assembling it and try to get to a point where it starts making some sound, I guess. Let's just take another look at the back of the board um, as I tip it from reflective through to transmissive. And there you can see light coming through. Uh, most, as I say, of the power connections. So I think the first thing I need to do is actually print out the schematic because I didn't do any replacing of component numberings with their values because there are just so many. I thought that would take forever. So I'll need the schematic in order to work out what all these components are. Uh, this is a whopping great schematic. There's a lot of stuff on here, but I'm going to concern myself with this stuff here. Um, we've got two oscillators. Now the pots for one of the oscillators are all going to be the underside pots, so we probably won't be able to get uh, anything from that oscillator. But the top side uh, pots are all going to be soldered in. So a couple of op amps, dual op amps here, uh, another dual op amp, but that's a JFET input, TL082. Here's a 741, so that's mixing all the oscillators and this noise generator, the linear feedback shift register, together. So we can probably pick the final output off the output of the 741 there, pin six. So if I can find R26, I can probably feed that into a speaker. So if I build just this bit, we should be able to get something out of this board. Now you can see I've been quite pedantic here and I've tried to run my rows or columns of ICs exactly uh, in line with the potentiometers. So this row, this the column, sorry, this column, and this column, which and that's the noise level 
and these are the noise chips so yeah I've tried to make it beautiful in terms of positioning on the front panel uh, this board is going to go here you can see the four pots are going to sit in those four holes there are three pots underneath and there's a switch I think that's a switch uh, just a two position rotary switch so that's going to sit there between the two slots for the PPM bar graphs and a board is going to sit inside this gap which is going to hold the matte black PCB which has the bar graph LEDs on it so that's how it's going to go so to make some sound we need U1, U2, 3 and 4 U1 and 2 are these two that's U3 and that's U4 so it's a little L shape of ICs I need to put in so let's get those in I'll speed it up a bit to uh, so it's not too boring. I want to get this done quickly as well. Speeded up footage or possibly not speeded up of me inserting ICs into these little four pin pin arrays. Surely I'm going to have to speed this up. And uh, what models are that? 1458 and starting to put it on the board and doing my first bit of soldering. Today I shall be using the rubber band stretched over the chip in its IC socket technique for soldering the pins underneath. And now dear brethren well, I don't know about brethren, but U3, which is a JFET input TL082, even though this one is actually a TL072 because it's all I could find. What on earth is up with this clock? It's really getting on my nerves. The battery's obviously gone flat, and that's because it's, I think, runs slightly fast. So every 24 hours or every 12 hours probably it has to wind itself backwards well of course it can't do that so it winds itself forwards that takes several minutes and use up a lot of battery power so I really need to tweak this one so that it runs slightly slow because then when it coordinates itself with the radio controlled thing it'll only do a small adjustment rather than a big one do you understand what I'm saying Well, look at that. I've got four integrated circuits in their sockets. Uh, that should be all I need for getting these oscillators to osculate. Uh, so I'm going to do these resistors in pairs because they're R1 and R2 are the same. Uh, R7 and R8 in there are almost certainly the same. So let's get some resistors. four resistors six resistors uh, this schematic I found these ICs which are sort of laid out in pin order but they're not quite as nice as if I'd used the actual op-amp um, sort of uh, triangle shapes which you can do but they don't have that form factor for all the different types and you have to pick sort of uh, one part of the chip and then the other part and place them separately it's quite awkward but then this isn't quite as visual as to what's actually going on. It's a shame, really. Uh, next, uh, resistor 5 and 6 are 560 ohms. 560 ohms. A couple of them. Let's get them in.
Resistor 17 and 18, 150k. 150, 000. 17, let's put the cup there. And 18. In your gear. Oh, that one's loose. No. I'm going to have to re bend that one. Oh, maybe not. Let's just shove it in and uh, hope it doesn't fall out, if you know what I mean. So, 150k. Uh, that reduces the output level of the oscillators massively because, of course, they swing pretty much rail to rail at that point, which is uh, 24 volts. That's a lot of audio. Uh, okay, there are a couple of caps there, but I'll do caps later. What other resistors have we got? Right, 47K resistors to mix the various bits of audio together in an audio mixer. 47Ks into a, a virtual earth, a grounding, a virtual ground point on an op amp. Let's get them in. Actually, I only need resistor 21 and 22 for the moment, which go into the input of this 741. Don't need that resistor. Don't... Oh, I need the feedback resistor. Yeah, 100k. So, so far so good. Now I need uh, the main oscillator capacitors, 100N each of these. I need... There's a couple of capacitors down here, which are just um, DC blocking capacitors couple of pots here, trimmer pots, and I'm not sure whether I've got that value, 2k2. I hope I do. So I think I've got the trimmers. These are 202. That's 2000. So that's 2000 or 2k. Now they're meant to be 2k2, but perhaps trimmers in the old days, you could get them in 2k2. Now you'll get them in 2k. What it'll have to do. So how well do these fit in these Oh yes, they fit very nicely. Um, I found these in the library, probably the LCSC library. Oh, they do fit really rather well. Let's solder those in. Polyester capacitors. 100N for the two main oscillator capacitors. They're a big value because these oscillators run really quite slow. The idea is that they're square wave oscillators. They run at a low frequency and therefore you get that frequency and all the harmonics above it. So yeah, low frequency oscillators. And 10N I need. Haha, <laughs> yeah, the common values I've wrote in big so that I can find them quickly. Uh, it looks to me like some of these have been in breadboard. Actually, maybe I'll leave the breadboard ones as breadboard length so they can be used in breadboard again. Right, I only need two of those, so 10N, let's get them in. So I think that's about it for the oscillators. Um, I need the three pots. Now they will only operate oscillator one. And I also need to put some power to this. So I need the three pin JST and I'll put the two tantalums in for the smoothing. That should be it. I should better fire this up and make some noise. Well, I seem to be very short of potentiometers. I've got a 10K log and a 10K lin, so I can do frequency and shape. I don't have a pot for level, but that can be 100k, it's not that critical. I think it's because on previous incarnations of um, these oscillators I was building it on here, I've used all my pots up and I never ordered any more. Yeah, these are 10k. I mean, I could take them off there, but they're soldered, the pins are bent over and soldered under wire loops, and then they're soldered at the front here, so they'd be a bit tricky. So I'm going to order some new pots, but I still think I can get this working today. Now it's just about to solder that without breaking that tag off, which probably wouldn't be a brilliant idea because they're quite tricky to get. Well, it doesn't take much effort, but it would be difficult when it's in the board. Okay, 10k log, that goes in the first position. Let's get that in. So I'm going to manipulate the pot to get it forward and backward to the right position and then feed the solder in. That looks about right. Oh, it's slightly tilted back, but I can bend that into its final position. 
Yeah, that looks good. Let's solder the other two pins of that potentiometer and then possibly even resolder the middle pin. So that should be anchored nice and firmly. Okay, let's get the 10K linear pot into the next position, which is the shape potentiometer. You'll hear what that is in due course. Well, I think that is assembled enough to actually get some sound out of this. I've got my 12L12 connector capacitors and the output comes out of these two caps. Um, now it's not got pull downs to ground, so it might be quite loud because these pots act as pull downs to ground and I've not got them fitted just at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just put the um, input to my amplifier in my finger and just dab it on there and see if I can hear the sound coming from the oscillator. But let's get uh, the 12012 connected up first. Now I've got the uh, four pin connector soldered on, so that's 12012 and five volts on white. So I'm just going to solder this three pin connector on as well. If I can get that on there without it all falling off, let's try it. Well, I'm just going to check the 12012 is there. So I'm across uh, pin eight and four of an op amp. That should give me 24 volts. So let's switch on my batteries. And yeah, I've got 23.8 volts. So something should be happening. Switch that off just in case. Right, I think I've got something. So if I put that on an output, no. Ah, uh, maybe that one. Yes, and go to ground. That's got something. So that's the highest frequency, it's quite low. And it goes down to a really low frequency, that's a couple of hertz. Square wave, let's try the shape. So you can hear a phasing effect. And then you set the trimmers, have I got a screwdriver? Yeah, until this just doesn't cut off. Not that one, must be this one. Yeah, so you set it so that it's just still on. So kind of like that. So that the shape pot can't quite turn that completely off. Because you don't want no sound coming out of it. So that's working. Frequency. That's working well. I'd quite like to get the other one working. Actually thinking about it, that's not going to be possible because I'll need two pots on the underside connections, which are the ones that are stepped in two tenths. And I'm not going to be able to do that uh, because they'll be rattling around underneath the board. So no, I'll have to content myself with just hearing the one oscillator for today with its phase control well it appears to work there are no short circuits on the board so yeah that's pretty good so cheerio